Hey everyone, welcome back to Nostalgia. Today, we're celebrating the lives of some cherished celebrities who are no longer with us. We've crafted heartfelt tributes in their honor. If you enjoy our content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Your support fuels our passion to keep bringing you more. Let's get started. Thank you. Eric Canuel, an influential Quebecois director renowned for his groundbreaking film Bon Cop, Bad Cop, passed away at the age of 63. Born in Montreal in 1961, Canuel forged a distinctive path in the Canadian film and television industries. His directorial debut, La Loi du K.O., marked the beginning of a prolific career spanning both official languages, reflecting Canada's rich bilingual heritage. Bon Cop, Bad Cop starring Patrick Ward and Colm Fiore, not only received critical acclaim, but also achieved significant commercial success, earning the Golden Reel Award as the highest-grossing Canadian movie of 2006. The film's blend of humor and suspense set a new standard for Canadian cinema and bridged cultural divides. Beyond cinema, Kenwell's versatility extended to television, where he directed popular series such as Transplant, Ransom, Flashpoint, and The Hunger. His ability to navigate both French and English media allowed him to collaborate with a diverse array of talent, from international stars to local Canadian actors, solidifying his stature in the industry. Kenuel's upbringing in a family deeply rooted in the performing arts, with his father, Yvonne Kenuel, as an actor, and his mother, Lucille Papino, also connected to the industry, profoundly shaped his artistic vision. His education at Concordia University and co-founding of Kino Films were instrumental in honing his directorial skills. Remembered for his dedication to storytelling and his ability to craft compelling narratives, Canuel left an indelible mark on the Canadian cultural landscape. He passed away in Montreal at the age of 63, after battling secondary plasma cell leukemia. Eric Canuel is survived by his partner Julie and his children Elodie, LeMay, and Justine. Tributes pour in for Eric Canwell, celebrating his enduring contributions to Canadian cinema and mourning the loss of a visionary director. Tom Kent, a legendary pioneer in radio syndication and a National Radio Hall of Fame nominee, left an indelible mark on the airwaves with his groundbreaking approach to radio programs. Born in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Kent's dynamic career spanned decades, during which he revolutionized American radio through the Tom Kent Radio Network. His network brought vibrant, diverse programming to over 600 stations across the United States. Kent's illustrious career began at notable stations such as WLS in Chicago and KF in Dallas, where his distinctive voice and charismatic presence quickly endeared him to listeners. This early success paved the way for his ventures into radio network management, where he introduced a variety of shows including The Ultimate Party and Love and Life Live in the 80s. These programs seamlessly blended classic hits with contemporary sounds, appealing to a broad audience and redefining radio entertainment. Beyond his professional triumphs, Kent was a devoted family man, residing in suburban Cleveland, Ohio with his wife Karen Marie and their children who continue his legacy in the industry. His contributions to radio were marked by a passion for music and a commitment to engaging and entertaining his audience. Tom Kent passed away at the age of 69, leaving a legacy that will resonate within the radio industry for generations. Tributes to Tom Kent reflect a life dedicated to transforming the soundscape of radio. Tamayo Perry, renowned for his magnetic roles in Pirates of the Caribbean and his mastery of surfing, left a lasting impact on both the entertainment and surfing worlds. Born in 1975 in Oahu, Hawaii, Perry was celebrated for his exceptional skills on the waves, especially at the infamous pipeline. His surfing prowess earned him numerous victories in prestigious competitions, including the Billabong Pro Trials and the Pipe Masters Trials, cementing his legendary status in the sport. In addition to his athletic achievements, Perry was a talented actor, best known for his compelling performance in Pirates of the Caribbean 
on Stranger Tides. His authentic portrayal brought a vivid passion for the ocean to the big screen, resonating deeply with audiences worldwide. Perry's filmography also includes notable roles in Blue Crush and television appearances on Hawaii Five Zero, showcasing his versatile acting skills. Beyond the camera and the waves, Perry served as a dedicated lifeguard with the city and county of Honolulu's Ocean Safety Department, admired for his infectious personality and commitment to public safety. Together with his wife Amelia, he fostered the next generation of surfers through the Oahu Surfing Experience, teaching and inspiring new enthusiasts with their profound connection to the sea. Perry's contributions to the surfing community and his cinematic achievements are profound, reflecting his deep passion and dedication to his crafts. His involvement in safety and mentorship highlighted his commitment to making a positive impact in his community. Tragically, Perry's life was cut short at the age of 49 due to a shark attack while surfing near Mahana Beach on Oahu's North Shore. His untimely death is a significant loss to both the surfing and film industries, as well as to those who knew him personally. Tributes to Tamayo Perry honor a life lived with extraordinary passion and impact. Geraldine Doyle, a groundbreaking comedian and singer, was celebrated for her sharp wit and captivating stage presence, making a significant impact on the entertainment world. Born on April 19, 1948, in Dublin, Ireland, Doyle initially gained recognition as a singer. Her talents and charisma led her to emigrate to Australia in the early 1970s with her family, where she would leave an indelible mark. Doyle quickly became a television staple, appearing on shows like The Mike Walsh Show, Midday with Ray Martin, and The Carrie Ann Kennerly Show. Her distinctive humor and engaging personality earned her seven Australian Entertainment Mo Awards. Notably, she was the first woman to win the award for Best Stand-Up Comic in Australia, a testament to her pioneering spirit in a male-dominated industry. She also made history as the first female to host the annual Premier's Concert at the Sydney Entertainment Centre. Beyond the stage, Doyle was a staunch advocate for dying with dignity, choosing voluntary assisted dying after a long battle with cancer. Her advocacy and public discussions on the topic brought significant attention to the movement. Doyle's legacy includes her commitment to her community and her role as a mentor to young comedians and performers. Her autobiography, You Wouldn't Read About It, published in 1990, offers insights into her vibrant career and the challenges she overcame. Geraldine Doyle passed away peacefully at her home at the age of 76. Her life's work and spirited advocacy leave a lasting legacy in both entertainment and social change. Tributes to Geraldine Doyle honor a life of courage, humor, and trailblazing achievements. Donald Sutherland, celebrated for his versatile roles in iconic films such as M.A.S.H., Ordinary People, and The Hunger Games, was an actor of profound depth and diversity. Born on July 17, 1935, in St. John, New Brunswick, Sutherland's career spanned over six decades, showcasing his ability to adopt a vast range of personas, from comedic to deeply tragic. His remarkable talent for bringing varied characters to life made him a pillar in the cinematic community. Though he never won a competitive Oscar, he was honored with an honorary statuette in 2017, underscoring his significant contributions to the film industry. His roles in The Dirty Dozen and Kelly's Heroes exemplified his knack for blending wit with a commanding presence, earning him a reputation for portraying charismatic Maverick. His performance as the charming yet sinister President Snow in the Hunger Games series garnered acclaim from a new generation of filmgoers, while his earlier work in films like Clute and Don't Look Now highlighted his dynamic acting skills and made significant impacts on the thriller genre. Sutherland's portrayal of a grieving father in Ordinary People is often lauded as one of his most powerful performances, demonstrating his exceptional emotional range. Beyond the screen, Sutherland was known for his eloquent voice and towering presence, contributing to his roles in political and horror genres, making him a memorable and influential figure in Hollywood. His work extended to television, 
where he shone in series like Commander-in-Chief and the Pillars of the Earth, further cementing his legacy as a skilled actor. Off-screen, Sutherland was an insightful individual whose thoughts on acting and life were highly regarded. His personal life included marriages to notable actresses and a family of actors and filmmakers who continue his legacy in the arts. Donald Sutherland passed away at the age of 88 in Miami after a long illness. His death marks the end of an era for an actor whose work has left an indelible mark on Hollywood and audiences worldwide. Tributes to Donald Sutherland celebrate a life and career that profoundly influenced the world of cinema. Taylor Wiley, celebrated for his extraordinary journey from a champion sumo wrestler to a beloved actor on the hit series Hawaii Five Zero, left an indelible mark on both the sports and entertainment worlds. Born on May 14, 1968, in Lai, Hawaii, Wiley first gained international fame in sumo wrestling under the name Takamiyama Kuni, becoming the first foreign-born wrestler to win a championship in the sports Makushita division in the late 1980s. After retiring due to knee issues, Wiley found a new calling in acting, captivating audiences on both television and film. His most notable role was Kamakona Tupuola, charismatic shrimp truck owner and informant on the CBS reboot of Hawaii Five Zero, which premiered in 2010. Wiley's character, beloved for his humor and depth, became a fan favorite, reflecting his ability to win over audiences with his warmth and larger-than-life personality. In addition to his television success, Wiley appeared in the comedy film Forgetting Sarah Marshall, portraying a friendly bartender, which showcased his comedic talents and further expanded his acting repertoire. His screen presence was marked by a genuine likability that resonated deeply with viewers and critics alike, making him a cherished figure in modern pop culture. Off-screen, Wiley was known for his dedication to his family and his community. His journey from sumo wrestler to television star was not only inspiring but also a testament to his adaptability and enduring charm. Wiley's contributions to entertainment, particularly his portrayal of native Hawaiian culture, brought significant attention to the islands he called home, making him a local hero and cultural ambassador. Taylor Wiley passed away at the age of 56, but his legacy endures through his impactful roles and the many lives he touched both in and out of the spotlight. His life's journey from the sumo ring to the silver screen remains a remarkable testament to his diverse talents and heartfelt spirit. Tributes to Taylor Wiley celebrate a life full of warmth, humor, and unwavering dedication to his craft and community. Hiram Kasten, a beloved figure in comedy known for his memorable appearances on the iconic series Seinfeld, left a lasting legacy in the entertainment world. Born on April 12, 1953, in the Bronx, New York, Kasten emerged as a key player in the New York comedy club scene during the 1970s and 1980s. His comedic journey began in theater, but he quickly found his true calling in stand-up, earning a coveted spot at the comic strip after an audition where Jerry Seinfeld himself gave his nod of approval. Kasten's infectious humor made him a favorite at venues like Catch a Rising Star, The Improve, The Comedy Cellar, and Caroline's. His notable role as Michael, a co-worker of Elaine Benny's on Seinfeld, made him a familiar face to television audiences across America. He also showcased his versatility on shows like Mad About You, Everybody Loves Raymond, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, among others. Beyond television, Kasten made his mark in Las Vegas, portraying a Joey Bishop-like character in The Rat Pack is Back, blending his comedic talents with stage performance. His career extended to various platforms, including television specials and cruise ship performances, bringing laughter to a global audience. Offstage, Kasten was known for his warmth and generosity. He was a devoted family man, committed to his wife Diana Keel Kastenbaum and their daughter Millicent Jade Kastenbaum. His dedication to charitable causes, particularly those supporting the entertainment community, reflected his deep connection to his roots in the performing arts. Hiram Kasten passed away at the age of 71, just a day after celebrating his 38th wedding anniversary, 
leaving behind a profound impact on both his audience and peers. His legacy is marked not only by his contributions to comedy, but also by his enduring spirit of kindness and community support. Tributes to Hiram Kasten honor a life full of humor, generosity, and heartfelt connection to those around him. What's trending on the internet? News 1. In a heartbreaking turn of events, Ava Hewlett, a 19-year-old from Estero, Florida, tragically passed away in her sleep after a night out. This occurred shortly after she was discharged from a hospital following an undisclosed incident at a local bar, Pelican Larry's Raw Bar and Grill, in Fort Myers. The unfortunate incident took place on June 15th, and Ava was found unresponsive at her home the next morning. Lee County detectives have launched a homicide investigation to unravel the mysterious circumstances surrounding her untimely death. Ava's passing has rekindled profound sorrow within her family, who had previously endured the loss of her brother Bradley Hewlett under tragic circumstances in 2019. The local community and Ava's loved ones are mourning the loss of a young woman described as vibrant and full of life, just as she was beginning to embrace adulthood. The investigation is ongoing, with officials awaiting further medical examinations to determine the exact cause of Ava's death. Reports of other incidents at the same location that evening have added to the tragedy, leaving the community and Ava's family seeking answers and justice amid their deep grief. News 2 In a heartbreaking incident, a baby girl died after being left in a hot car in San Diego. Diana Sofia de Los Santos, just two months old, was discovered unresponsive late at night and rushed to the hospital, where she tragically passed away. This sorrowful event occurred shortly after Diana was adopted by a loving local couple, Rare and Jason de Los Santos, who had warmly welcomed her into their family. The incident is currently under investigation by the San Diego County Sheriff's Office, to determine the circumstances that led to her being left in the car. No charges have been filed yet. The temperature inside a parked car can escalate rapidly, creating a lethal environment, especially for young children whose bodies heat up much faster than adults. This tragic story underscores the critical importance of never leaving children unattended in vehicles, especially as temperatures rise. The community and the family are devastated by the loss. Remembering Diana as a joyful addition to the De Los Santos family, whose brief life touched the hearts of those around her. The investigation continues as authorities and the family seek answers in this grievous event. News 3. In a tragic incident at Kings Island, Ohio, a guest lost his life after being struck by the Banshee roller coaster. The incident occurred on June 19th, and the Hamilton County Coroner's Office confirmed the death of 38-year-old Araro Nelson on June 21st at UC Medical Center. Nelson suffered critical injuries after entering a restricted area of the Banshee roller coaster and being struck by the ride traveling at high speed. First responders swiftly arrived at the scene, providing immediate assistance before transporting him to Westchester Hospital. Later, he was airlifted to UC Medical Center for further treatment. Following the incident, state inspectors conducted a comprehensive review of the ride and the circumstances surrounding the event. Kings Island, after ensuring all safety protocols were rigorously followed, reopened the Banshee to guests on June 22nd. The investigation into the incident remains ongoing, with officials stressing the paramount importance of adhering to safety regulations and avoiding restricted areas. This tragic incident has cast a somber shadow over the amusement park, serving as a poignant reminder for both guests and operators alike the critical significance of safety in such. News 4. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, a Maryland couple tragically lost their lives to extreme heat while on their Hajj pilgrimage in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. Al-Haji Alodi and Haja Isatu Wuri, residents of Bowie, succumbed amidst temperatures exceeding 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Their daughter, Sita Wuri, informed CNN that her parents likely suffered heat strokes due to the intense conditions. 
The couple had embarked on the annual pilgrimage, a spiritual journey that drew millions, using their life savings of approximately $11,500 each. Hajj is a once-in-a-lifetime obligation for physically and financially able Muslims, but this year it coincided with Saudi Arabia's summer, posing severe health risks. Tragically, the couple lacked the necessary permits to access cooling facilities available to registered pilgrims, exacerbating their vulnerability to the harsh conditions. Haja Isata Wuri was remembered fondly for her active involvement in local and global community efforts, including volunteering for the U.S. Senate campaign of Angela Alsabrooks, who expressed heartfelt condolences over the loss. This incident underscores the potential dangers of undertaking the pilgrimage in extreme weather conditions and emphasizes the critical need for adequate preparation and support for all pilgrims. News 5. Dr. Dennis Deer, a distinguished member of the Cook County Board of Commissioners since 2017, passed away at the age of 51 as announced by his family on Monday. Appointed after the passing of Robert Steele, Deere is remembered as a tireless advocate for the working people of Chicago. His dedicated work encompassed health care, education, economic development, employment and training, re-entry initiatives, and affordable housing. Born with a rare condition called Cetus Inversus, where major visceral organs are mirrored from their normal positions, Deere lived a robust public life until his health necessitated a double lung transplant last year. Despite his health challenges, Deere saw his surgery as a second chance at life and became a passionate advocate for organ donation throughout his political career. A staunch proponent of equity, Deere dedicated himself to improving public services across diverse Chicago communities, including The Loop and North Lawndale. Cook County Board President Tony Preckwinkle Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson expressed deep condolences, acknowledging Deere's substantial contributions to community development and public health. He leaves behind a legacy of profound community impact and is survived by his wife Barbara and their three children who have requested privacy during this difficult time. News 6 Anne Lurie, a beloved philanthropist whose generosity reshaped Chicago's social and medical landscapes, passed away at the age of 79. Known for her profound commitment to doing a good deed daily, Lurie's impact extended from the Anne and Robert H. Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago to numerous global initiatives. She died after a period in hospice care, surrounded by close friends and family. Throughout her life, Lurie directed her resources towards causes that supported health care, education, and the arts. Her philanthropic journey was shaped by her humble beginnings in Florida, raised by a single mother, which inspired a lifelong dedication to service and community support. Her legacy includes transformative donations, such as $100 million to Lurie Children's Hospital and significant contributions to Northwestern Memorial's Cancer Center. In addition to her major contributions, Lurie was a steadfast advocate for smaller community programs and international health initiatives, notably in Kenya. Chicago leaders and institutions mourn her passing, emphasizing her visionary role in advocating for equitable access to medical and educational resources. Lurie is survived by her husband, Mark Muhim, six children, and several grandchildren, all of whom reflect her compassionate spirit and commitment to improving lives. News 7. In a solemn announcement, Roy Jones Jr., the renowned boxing champion, shared the heartbreaking news of his son DeAndre's passing over the weekend. The family is deeply mourning this unexpected loss. The 55-year-old athlete expressed profound gratitude for the precious moments spent with his son during his final night. I am so thankful that God allowed me to come home Friday night to spend the last night of his life with me and the family, Jones Jr. said highlighting the importance of family bonds and unity during difficult times. Roy Jones Jr., celebrated for his dynamic career and numerous championships across various weight classes, has requested privacy as he and his family navigate their grief. He also took a moment to remind his fans about the value of support during tough times, emphasizing resilience and hope. 
The boxing community and fans worldwide have extended their heartfelt condolences and support to the Jones family during this challenging period. Thanks for joining us on this journey down memory lane as we pay tribute to these beloved celebrities. Their impact on our lives and the entertainment industry will always be remembered. If you found this video meaningful, don't forget to show your support by liking and subscribing. Your encouragement inspires us to continue sharing stories that resonate with you. Until next time, take care and remember to cherish the memories of those who have left a lasting legacy. Thank you for watching.